Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here. Thank you for joining me in today's video. If you are struggling with some of your watercolor edges, I wanna show you a specific case you might deal with uh, that will really help you. So we're gonna look a bit at pre-wetting the paper. And what do I mean by that? So let's say that I have a shape where I want a smooth transition, okay? Could be anything rounded, which would make sense. Let me zoom in. So anything rounded like this shape, and let's say I want a smooth transition going right about here, okay? So uh, one of the ways I show that you can do that, and this will really show you how techniques are only a tool to get the result you want, but a, a technique that's executed in the right timing to create your vision can save you so much trouble and time and mess. So the way I generally show how to do this is pre-wet, the area where you want a smooth edge. So I'm just going over that line. And now if I will grab a bit of paint from my palette, when I place that paint, I will get a smooth edge where I pre-wet it, okay? Now this is a technique you want to, um, you wanna get a feel for it, okay? Because uh, there are different ways of using it, different instances that will lead to different results. Sometimes you have to be a little careful in how you move your brush. Generally, the more you keep the brush moving, the less the paint is going to just move into the wet area, okay? Now, very often you'll encounter this when, uh, when you want to avoid paint in some place and also to have a highlight, basically, that has soft edges. That's the thing. So if I want... A soft highlight here. I'll pre-wet the area where I want that soft highlight. Now I'll come back with some paint here from my palette and I will paint around it and that way I will maintain a smooth transition okay and I can go ahead and jump to some darker paint too if I want to. That way I can maintain a relatively smooth transition and highlight in the middle, okay? This can be true for any kind of shape, uh, whether you want some area to have a smooth transition and then some area to have a hard transition, you'll partially pre-wet and then here you'll get a soft transition, see? As long as I move the brush, it's gonna be okay. The moment I do this, it starts spreading out, okay? But if I move it along, then I continue, you see soft edge and then hard edge. Now let's look at, and you see again, there is some, this isn't as straightforward necessarily as you think. Gravity is at play, a lot of things are at play. But let's look at this in action. Let's see an actual case where this is very useful. I'm gonna zoom out a bit. I want you to see both uh, my palette and a piece of paper properly. Um, and we'll just get a very basic drawing out of the way here. I have this onion. Gonna keep it simple, okay? Relatively simple. Top. Then the shape of the onion. Something like this. And then we'll get a bit of a shadow underneath. The pattern goes something like that with the heel or, you know, just the shape and this is exactly the type of use case you'll have for this technique. So I'm going to just make sure, because now it's an actual painting, that I have a cl relatively clean brush. And I'm going to pre-wet. Now here's the catch. The paint is going to move into the area I pre-wet. So you want to have some extra leeway in the size of area you pre-wet. So I'm going to pre-wet, in layman terms, a larger area than I need for the highlight, okay? Then I'm gonna switch over here, grab some of this very nice neutral kind of green color, and I'm just going to start applying it, touching that area right over here. And then we're gonna um, warm it up just a bit towards the right so that we get somewhat of a neutral, I would say. somewhat of a neutral color. And remember, the edges do start to dry, so you want to be aware of that. I'm not aiming here for finished painting, so you can take it relatively easily. And then a bit of, you see there's this lovely orange there. So it could be an opportunity to do a hybrid approach with a bit of wet and wet or something like that. 
And then as we move down below, I'm going to go back to neutralizing it just a bit. And I'm left with this highlight. Now, this is a big highlight. I can narrow it down manually, carefully. So, and slowly close the gap on it and start doing the rest of, you know, making sure. See, there's this beautiful, again, red-ish here. A bit of it here as well. A bit of it down below. And go down and merge with the shadow underneath it. I'm maintaining the same range of colors. Nothing is steps too much out of line here when it comes to uh, the color itself. And I can use this opportunity to start darkening some things as long as it's still wet. Let me show some of it is a bit shiny yet, so we can play around with that. And that would be just a very practical way of, I'll just switch to a large brush and um, basically wrap this up very quickly here. Um, this is one way to use that kind of, a th of course I could go ahead and darken, you know, I could uh, continue um, pushing the values to look more like what I want them to be or more accurate. I'm gonna keep a bit of a gap there. Um, Probably make it a little warm-ish. But the idea is how can I use a very effective technique in the uh, proper timing based on the impression I'm after. And just save myself a lot of energy and time. Because I'm going to show you in a second why this is so useful. And when. Or rather what it can prevent, right? Oh, we just got a very basic background here. See, it's, a, it's an onion. Uh, you could, of course, again, start layering and glazing, but I want to show you. So if we go back to this piece of paper. Sometimes what you'll do is, which is nothing wrong with that, okay? It's just a matter of effectiveness. Sometimes you'll paint the areas around it, whatever colors you'll be using. And then there will be an attempt to smoothen out those edges, like so. Now it is possible, as you can see here, and if you're effective enough, you should be able to get it. But then you may end up with another border here that you'll have to once again smoothen out. So generally, I find that with watercolor, the easier option, let me zoom out, most of the time the easier option is going to be to let the water do the work. So if you do this, as simple as it gets, I'm going to grab some water, some paint, just do this. In doing that, there's a lot of wisdom because I'm letting the paint and the water do its thing. I'm letting the water move the paint around, even though it doesn't look like anything fancy, right? I'm still letting the, the water carry a lot of the workload. The same thing happens when you do this. You let the water do the work for you. And I think there's a lot of wisdom in knowing when and how to let watercolor do the work for you instead of fighting against it. And I think this is a great specific example. You see here already I have an edge. Don't get it twisted. I can work with that and I always work with that. I'll have a lot of paintings where I do that. I'll just smoothen it out here. No problem. Really no problem. I can lift back even. But there's a lot of value in letting just paint and the water carry the process and this is one way of doing it and we can of course go ahead and add some details over the onion making it more detailed more believable more whatever it doesn't matter really um, but that's one I think wise way of doing it in this particular example where you have a highlight with all of its soft edges all around it even if it's partial you can use this technique um, just make your, your life a whole lot easier I hope you found this helpful if you want to get more help in that direction um, to develop the sort of wisdom to let the paint do its thing. Be sure if you still haven't checked out the frustration free watercolor course, I'm going to link it down below. Tons of processes and, and the mindset that is basically letting go, that basically the mindset of having no mindset and letting the paint do its thing. Uh, if you're after that, if you yearn for that freedom, I highly recommend you check it out. I do want to thank you so, so much for watching. I do want to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. If you want to receive credits 
at the end of my videos and be a huge part of what I'm doing here, feel free to go ahead, check it out, support, you know, $1, $2, um, not too many benefits other than the credit at the end of the videos and knowing that you help me greatly. But in any case, I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care.